But this goes beyond um, party politics, well, doesn't well, it? Well, some of the things that have been said over the last 24 and 48 hours have been entirely party political. Uh, and let's not forget uh, that Mike Nesbitt, his party, uh, the SDLP, the Alliance Party as well, all actually voted to keep this scheme in place back in February whenever they had the opportunity to close yeah, They were not in full possession of the facts, though. That's the point. And you can't really argue against well, that. Well, well these, are, these are also parties who, who, again, I've heard them say that they weren't in full possession of the facts, but that didn't prevent their members at every stage of the passage of this scheme through the old Enterprise Committee voting right. in favour of it and, and actually approving it and voting to put the scheme in place. And again, when they had the opportunity to, to bring... So what they effectively voted for back in February was to, to keep this scheme going, the scheme that some of them has de have described as squander of public money. They were prepared to squander much more. But their point, time and again, across the board, is that they didn't know the details that have now become uh, well, public. So let's talk about Arlene Foster's performance on this issue. She was the minister with oversight of the scheme when she was in charge of what was then Deddy. She knew in 2013 when she was contacted by the whistleblower from whom we have heard today that there were potential problems with the scheme. She says she passed those concerns on to her which civil she, which servants. She did, which she did. And which then did. what happened? Which she did. Now, so Mar Arnie Foster re received a, um, a letter, I think it was from, a, uh, from the whistleblower, who, who by the way, I want to thank the whistleblower for her contribution. I want to uh, apologise to her for the fact that her complaint was not taken seriously by government. Um, it was taken seriously, however, by Arlene Foster, who, who passed the information on to her officials, and that's absolutely the right thing. And then didn't seem that's, to do anything or didn't well, keep a watchful eye after that point. Uh, that's the charge. Right, well, the, the communication that she received from the whistleblower was not specific about what the, the alleged abuse of the scheme was. Arnie well, rightly well, passed that. We don't that. know. We don't know. Well, I can say. I can. I can say that. That. That's. That's. Have you seen the letter? Um, I have seen. Uh, I have seen the letter. And 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 and. and are I you going to put that letter in the public domain so that we can all see that letter? Well, yeah, look, you, can, you can take my word for it that it is not specific about the, the abuse of it. I'm not. I'm, Arnie, I'm not sure that. People, but you don't even, with the greatest respect. Well, I'm not sure that people are prepared to take anybody's word but, on any of this but, because the, the, the way to deal with it, of course, is to go for full transparency, full disclosure, put all of that paperwork in the public domain, and let us be the judge. Absolutely of the seriousness of that first contact and what happened in future and, correspondence. And I don't disagree with the premise of what you said. I think we do So have will to get, you do that? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't disagree with the fact that we have to get the full facts of the situation clear. We all have we, to get we, the full we facts. We absolutely all have to yeah. get the full facts. But of I'm this taking in, your word for it at the moment. That's and, and the difficulty. Course, and, and, and look, you, there is a process that this is going through and you're, you're well aware of the process. The Public Accounts Committee are looking at this. There are a range of fact-finding investigations that are going on. But in, in respect of the, the complaint, it was passed on, appropriately passed on by Arning to her officials uh, who were tasked to investigate it. It was they who didn't take the complaint seriously. Yeah. Uh, and the, the now permanent secretary of the Department for the Economy, in his evidence to the Public Accounts Committee, said that Arlene acted entirely appropriately. Well, he would say not, that, not part he? Well, no, he doesn't have to I say mean, that. He's, he's his boss. He's, he, he, no, no he, he isn't, uh, um, or she isn't his, his boss. He, he is an impartial civil servant giving evidence to the Public Accounts Committee on the record, and he said that she acted entirely appropriately, not partially appropriately, but entirely well, here, appropriately here's the thing. in dealing she, with she the whistleblowers. She acted entirely appropriately by bringing it up, by passing on the information to her senior civil servant. Which is the right the thing The question to do. is, where people may wonder if she did the right thing, was in her failure to follow up and keep a close eye on what happened next, because clearly she didn't. The, 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 her officials did not come back to her with any any complaint, and, and she it, didn't she, she think to ask. She didn't have the. There was no detail in the complaint to for, for her to follow up on. So, the, but as I said, the, the now permanent secretary in the Department for the Economy, and his evidence on the record, uh, said that she she acted entirely appropriately. But having had the issue flagged up, would it not have made sense for her to keep in contact with those senior civil servants who she, she was meeting on a daily basis to say, whatever happened about the woman who came in to speak to me about her concerns on the, 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 the heating scheme? Well, I mean, that, that seems so blindingly obvious. Well, look, no, look, as you, look, I don't think any... I mean, the idea that, that Arlene is not, you know... I mean, I've heard it suggested that she, you know, isn't looking at this thing, wasn't interested. I mean, you, you've interviewed Arnie Foster on, on countless occasions. And, and, and you or uh, political opponents couldn't, even, even those who, who are her opponents, couldn't say for a second that Arlene is, is, is not capable and not across things. And this is a, I mean, I've known Arlene for, for 20 years. She's an incredibly capable person. And she has done her job in this case entirely appropriately. And, and okay, well, well, well she Jim said, says she fell asleep at the wheel. Well, it's, it's not, it, you know, Jim, of course Jim is going to say something like that because he's. But if she Jim, here's the point, Simon Hamlin, if she didn't fall asleep at the wheel, if she didn't drop the ball, then what she needs to do, surely, but, is put all of the relevant but, correspondence but, but into the public 
public domain so that Look, the politicians and, and, and the public can judge and, for ourselves. And, and of course, in and, and as you know, as I repeat it again, the Public Accounts Committee is investigating this, and, and, they, and as they should, and all of the information will be in the public domain in due course. But, Let's look, let's look at what Arning did do. And, but if she didn't do anything let's wrong, she didn't wouldn't do anything wouldn't it be wrong. a great help to you if there's nothing to hide? Well, do you, put the information you, in the public domain and this well, goes away. Uh, Mark, Until Mark, the information being, is in the public you're, domain, Mark, you're now being these silly. questions are still Mark, going to Mark, be asked. You're, you're now being silly because you know that there is an investigation going on with the PAC are dealing with, and you know that information. You know well, rightly. I know that Colm Eastwood you know has rightly. asked for the First Minister to appear before the PAC. Well, well, Will she do well, that? Well, he actually asked her today to go before the Public Affairs Committee, a committee that doesn't exist. OK. But, 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 well, but he meant but presumably the Public Accounts Committee. But, but, but Arning, let, let, But will let, she? Let, Here's the let, point. Will she? Let, 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 but let, let me counter. Look, I'm sure Arning, whenever she comes back, will address this. She is, she is, as she has said, she is accountable and answerable to the Assembly. Well, then she should and, appear and, before and the PAC. Be, she will be forthcoming, I'm sure, because she has absolutely nothing to hide. Right. And, and let me counter the accusation that she was somehow not paying just attention. Let me ask you a simple question. Should she appear before the PAC? Wait. In your view, she phoned you from she, China. If she speaks to you next week, Simon, what do you think I should do? What do you think she, she should do? Ar Ar Arlene has said, and she is on the record as saying on this issue, that she is answerable and accountable to the Assembly. Right. And, and I am I'm absolutely confident that she will come forward in due course because she has absolutely nothing to hide. Because, and let me, if, I, if I can go back and answer a uh, question that you asked about three questions ago around the charges that have been made. The, the policy was developed, was direction was set by Arling, and it was a good policy direction. It was the right thing to do. The the implementation and design of that by po so called policy experts within the department was wrong. Uh, they had also relied on e e independent external experts and consultants. So seriously, there's a buck passing going on they tonight. You're, you're telling me tonight, so, you're telling our so viewers design, tonight categorically, she did nothing wrong. Civil no, servants who were responsible for the scheme, they got it wrong. They, they were asleep it. at the wheel. They, they dropped the they ball. Got it. Is they, that, is, they, just to be clear, is that what you're telling me they tonight? Got, they got, it, is, it is clear to me that they got the design of this scheme wrong. The consultants that they used at the start in the design of the scheme are on the record at the PAC saying that they got it wrong and apologise for that. Um, there was at no stage within, uh, and, and again, something which has been confirmed by senior officials within the Department for the Economy, no um, advice was given, no recommendation was given to Arling during her time. But she didn't to, think to, to ask. To bring she forward, didn't well, think on, to sorry, ask let, how let, it was going. Let me finish this. No recommendation was brought forward to, to, to bring in cost control measures, and the issue hadn't actually crystallised during her time in the department. So, you know, people are asking, look, what should, should she do, resign? Absolutely, she should not resign, because there is nothing that there she has no done wrong. There was no effective ministerial nothing. control in place. You, Who who was running the department? You, you, she handed it over was, to the civil service, was, did she? I, I don't think you, you listened to the last point I made. There was no crystallisation of the problem during her time in office. And, and, and it's important to note, okay, and briefly. This, is, this is sometimes forgotten, that at the early stages of the scheme, there was a £15 million underspend. Now, clearly, that has flipped quite seriously yeah, in the other direction. It certainly has. It very much has. And that's what we're trying to get to yeah. grips with. And okay. that's what, that's what so, my focus now is okay. upon. You're, and that's what Arling's focus is upon. you've talked about transparency. Well, that's fine. Well, maybe I can help you to deliver that. I want to ask you about your handling of the issue since you became Economy Minister back in June. PwC was brought in to conduct an independent review of the scheme. In August of this year, you said you wanted to make public the outcome of those site inspections that were conducted as part of that report. It's now the 8th of December and we're still waiting for that to happen. Why? Yeah, because we're working through this. I mean, this How long is, does it take? This is, this is a very, very serious issue and we are giving it the serious attention that it requires. And you're right that not long after coming into post, I, I brought in PwC to carry out that independent investigation, which were of site inspections. Uh, they've carried out investigations on, I think it's around 300 boilers. Yeah. Um, and they have found um, evidence to show that there have been some abuse of the scheme. And yes. they have been dealing with that abuse. And in some a, cases... A, a small number of fraud it, cases, a very small it, number of fraud well, cases. You know, there, but there, certainly abuse I, I, of the you, spirit of the scheme. There, there has been abuse of the spirit of the scheme and there has been some abuse. And as you know, yeah. when, whenever there is... You know, proving fraud takes some time and takes some evidence to do it. But, but this have, isn't about have, fraud, because you'll never recover all this money. You'll well, never recover £400 well, million pounds I, by just identifying but, the cases but, of fraud. No, you're, you're absolutely right. But clearly we have to, where we have identified cases of fraud, of fraud or potential fraud, we need to, need to bear down on that and we need to have strong enforcement of that. But in respect of the other costs, I mean, there are a lot of people got involved in the scheme, uh, legitimately got involved in the scheme, um, without any intent to abuse the system, but they are getting a return well over and above what would have been anticipated and what was fair. Uh, and that is what we are looking at and that is what we're considering. Yeah, but you need to get that report into the public domain as quickly as possible if you are going to reassure but members of the public that again, you've got nothing to hide. Again, Mark, the Do you report, accept that? The report, the first report, 
is with the Public Accounts Committee. The Public Accounts Committee will, I'm sure, make that public in due course. Right. That is the right and proper place for it. And you're aware of the conventions in respect of all of that. Uh, and you know that, that they will publish it in due course. And Why? Make that, make all right. that public and people can, can, can look over at it at that, that, at that time. Why have you taken no steps at this stage to um, reveal the names of the beneficiaries of the scheme? Well, again, this is an issue, again, I've, I've been asked various questions about doing this, and you know, and, and as do those, I'm sure, who have asked these questions, that you know, the, those pe people who signed up to the scheme did not agree to have their names put forward. The column uh, Eastwood says we need to know who benefited. Well, you know, there, there are clearly there, there are um, hundreds and thousands of people who benefited in terms of having the uh, support through the scheme, but these, the, the, the um, uh, Data, Pro Data Protection Act prevents uh, even if I wanted to, prevents me from putting these right it? into That's the a public. Bit of a lame excuse. And let me tell you why. Uh, Details of the farmers who receive single farm payments are but, published yeah, annually. I, I, Details I, of with, how much lawyers involved in legal aid work are published yes, every with, year. With, so with, um, that with, doesn't stack with, up. With, no, you well, could well, publish well, the names it, if you it, wanted it, to. It, it does, but but I, yeah, well, well I, I could go out and do it, and then I could be actually brought for brought, um, I could be prosecuted for doing that myself because these people haven't consented. And but that's, if that's people the, have nothing to hide, the then, they, then they've that's nothing to hide. But, you know, but people who haven't consented to do it, and again, you know, this is the case, Mark. People have not consented to do this. They are protected by the Data Protection Act. That's what it's there for. You could introduce an opt-out scheme. You could tell people if they want to remain recipients well, of this well, benefit, that their details will be published, uh, so they have a choice. If they want to remain anonymous, they take themselves out of the scheme. But, you know, That's the way of doing it, isn't it? Well, uh, well, let, let, let me t I, what I'm focused on, I mean, th th I think this is, a, this is a distraction. I think what the issue at hand here is, is getting to grips with the problem that we have, which is the, the overspend, the £400 million pounds that you mentioned earlier. That's what I'm focused on. Right. That's what Arlene is focused on. But, that is what we are collectively doing. We are, bringing, we are working on right. a plan which we will and bring here's forward the concern. to let, mitigate let me put those this, costs. All right, fair enough. Here's the concern that your reluctance to put that information in the public domain could be because there are names on that list that could be embarrassing for your party. But Is that the case? I, I don't know the names that are, that are on the could list. Could that be the I, case? I, I don't know that. I mean, your name could be on the list, Mark. Well, I can I assure know. you my name's not on well, the it list. Could be on it. So, well, but, it isn't you know, on the list. Well, it, uh, but look, it, it, it is, that is not the case. It is an issue where the names that are on the list, they, the people who have received it uh, have um, not consented to their names going forward. They are therefore protected by the first principle of the Data Protection Act, and therefore we can't do that. So you're stuffed. You can't do you're that. stuffed. You can't, you can't but, name but, those individuals. But, 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 People see but, but, that but, but, as a lack of transparency. But, but, and you say you're going to but, fix this. Tell me in 30 are, seconds, but, what but, are you going to do to fix are, this system? What we are doing, and you're, you're asking for the names of but what we are doing is we are investigating sites. And that's, what, that's something that I initiated when coming into, into this job. I initiated the PwC investigation, which has gone out and investigated around 300 of the... Uh, of the installations. And four payments have been have stopped. To, yeah, which, which, is a, which is a start, and it's a small start. A very small very start. small start, but it's a start of a process which we are bringing forward a plan that we are working on. That's the first phase of it. There will be more work will be done, and a plan will be brought forward which will radically reduce, significantly reduce and you the can't cost guillotine, of this to You the cannot person. guillotine the scheme at the moment and suspend it because you are concerned about fraud, which you have mentioned, and you are concerned about a, an overspend at a cost to the public purse of £400 million. You don't have the power to stop the system at well, the moment while you investigate. Well, of course, the, the, the scheme was stopped. And nobody else was allowed on it. Um, and, and, you know, what we are but now working on... But it didn't stop on, a £400 million overspend. No, it, 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 it didn't. And, and, and uh, you know, that is, that is regrettable, deeply regrettable. But what we are doing now, what, what I am focused on, my number one priority in my department, is to reduce the cost, significantly reduce the cost to Northern Ireland right. taxpayers. We're working on a plan. We're taking clear legal advice because we want to get a robust plan, a plan that works, a plan that delivers what we want, which is a significant reduction in the cost to the Northern Ireland public purse.